So let, let's start there. Let, let's talk about this, our nervous system and the, the different components of the nervous system, because I think we all have the biology 101, but uh, polyvagal theory takes a much more nuanced view on the nervous system. So can you help us just start to flesh that out a bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And when, you know, we were just, you know, I was taking a trip down memory lane, thanks to your questions about my background and, you know, my neuroception, which is one of Steve's brilliant um, words that he created, neuroception, the way the nervous system um, takes in information, listens, and, and, and then brings a response, brings us into one of our states in the hierarchy. But my neuroception was having a lovely time remembering and taking in and feeling you know, the connections and, and all those cues of safety and, and, and joy and happiness. And then it, what happened was my neuroception of safety and connection brought alive my ventral vagal state, which is, you know, again, the, the state in our nervous system. It's part of the parasympathetic nervous system that allows us to be present, to be organized, to engage, to communicate, to connect, to experience joy you know, both in the present moment and remembering a moment, you know, and then, you know, you and I are having this moment together. So our nervous systems are, are, are communicating in that way. So, you know, it, it, the nervous system truly is at the heart of our lived experience, moment to moment. And so understanding it, again, through Steve's brilliant polyvagal theory, I think is, is so helpful for us. And so neuroception, we talked about a neuroception, you know, takes in information inside our body. So it's listening inside all the time to what's going on inside. And then it takes in environmental cues, right? Which we were just, you know, having fun, you know, remembering in my system. And then it takes in cues between. So your system and my system met like five minutes ago and are already having a conversation, right? Below the level of our brain. Our nervous systems are, are connecting and feeling each other out and, and answering the question, is this safe? That's what the nervous system does through neuroception. Is this safe? You know, can I approach? Can I connect? Or should I, you know, take a step back? Should I have a survival response instead? Right? So it's safety or survival is really the question for neuroception. And that leads us to the next one, to hierarchy which again, Steve illustrated through polyvagal theory, ventral sympathetic dorsal are the three states that we move through in a predictable order, right? And it's the predictability of it that makes it such a, a wonderful thing to understand. Because I know, you know, if I'm anchored in ventral, that place of, of feeling a neuroception of safety, I feel, you know, ready to engage and, and meet the world, meet the moment, from a place of regulation and connection, if that be, is overwhelmed by what's going on in, in my world in the moment, the next place I go is to sympathetic fight and flight. Everybody does that. Everybody travels from ventral to sympathetic. That's the next stop on the hierarchy. And fight and flight, I think most of us understand pretty well. It's that cortisol, adrenaline, you know, yeah. desperate, overwhelming, chaotic, disorganized energy that comes flooding in. That's that's your survival state of, of sympathetic, right? And the hope of the nervous system is that by doing something here, taking an action here, we will resolve what's going on and be able to come back up to the top of the hierarchy to ventral. That's always the hope. I think the nervous system longs to come to ventral and inherently knows how to get there. I'm going to pause you there because before we even get to dorsal, this is the, when people think about autonomic nervous system, this is often what they're thinking about, right? So the, um, the state of, of feeling safe and connected, and then the state of feeling stressed and threatened, right? And that we start with ventral, and you're talking about um, sort of the ventral vagus nerve, which we'll share more about. But I just want to give an example of it because I think it helps people to get it when you're um, like can relate to, oh yeah, I've had that feeling. And an example for me, because I was preparing for this interview and listening to your book anchored and listening to you being, you know, in different ways. But I was going to a, um, our first day orientation of school for my kids. And I was really excited. Yay, we're going to meet people. This is great. And then as soon as I got there and there was this crowd of people that were all around the drinks 
I noticed myself getting really scared and I was panicking. I was feeling different. I was questioning what I was wearing. (laughs) I was, you know, just in this state of, I don't know if I belong here. And I'm in the middle of that trying to make small talk and I'm stumbling over my words a little bit because I don't feel like I have the right thing to say. And up comes um, this very tall man who I I didn't remember, but he reminded me, he said, hi, Diana, I'm Jake. And Jake was someone that I went to high school with that I haven't seen in years, but now teaches at this school. And I remembered at a physical level, a bodily level, Jake, he's safe. And in that moment, my whole, everything shifted. All of a sudden I felt different. So it wasn't even cognitive because I don't, this guy wasn't even really like very close friends of mine, but I just remember he was kind of like a good guy, Mm -hmm. but my nervous system remembered it. So that's an example, I think of like, you go in safe, then you go into threat, but then you can find your back, your way back. Right. Right. Again. Yeah. And what a beautiful example of of the, you know, embodied safety, not not embrained safety, because your brain, you know, was going somewhere different, but your nervous system, you know, had that memory. It was wired in. Jake, good guy, was wired into your yeah. nervous system, right? And then it was it, then everything began to settle. I love that. That's a that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. when you when you're talking about ventral, you're talking mm-hmm. about a, a part of the the. So this is the polyvagal theory. Yeah. <laughs> many, many parts of our vagus nerve. Can we rewind a little bit and talk about the vagus nerve and the ventral part? And then we yeah. can go into that third part of the hierarchy, the dorsal. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, the vagus nerve is, you know, and vagus is Latin for wandering. And it really does wander throughout our body. It begins in our brainstem and then wanders down through through our, you know, our 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 heart, our lungs, our, our di- into our digestive system. The whole, the whole length of the vagus, you know, it goes goes brainstem down, around, all the way down, right? And then it's it's it comes in two parts. So we have ventral vagus, which is what we were just talking about. That that system that really brings us into um, social engagement, into feeling um, safe. Um, with others and on our own, right? Because it's, it's it's not just social; it's also solitude, mm-hmm. right? It's it's those lovely moments of stillness that that are nourishing as well. the 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 hallmark of ventral is a neuroception of safety, and so there's so many flavors of ventral. Let's think about those for a minute. There can be the calm, but there can also be the the passion and the joy. There can be the the ease. There can be the the um, ready to ready to, you know, do this interview, right? Ready to have this conversation. So there's an alertness and also an ease, right? So lots of different flavors. And I love talking about that because people often think, you know, ventral is calm because the opposite is stress, Mm -hmm. right? And there are just so many flavors of ventral that are fun to explore. You look at kids, kids have so many flavors of ventral, right? They're, they're, they're playful, they're joyful, they're, they're artistic, they're focused, they're, you know, it's fun to see all those flavors. And we have the same as, as, as adults. So that's ventral, right? And, and, you know, we talked a bit about the sympathetic and you illustrated it so beautifully. You feel like, oh, I don't belong. I'm a misfit. What am I doing? I can't talk. You know, you've got all this energy that's, that's, that's flooding. And and is is you can't organize, you know, so it, it that loses its purpose, right? We have lots of energy in ventral, but but it's organized and purposeful. It's taking us somewhere. It's sympathetic. It's just chaotic all over the place, right? Yeah. And then if we go, you know, if sympathetic doesn't help us escape the problem, resolve what's happening. We have that other place in the nervous system, which again is vagus, but is dorsal vagal. And so, you know, and that again is is what Steve really mapped in polyvagal theory. We have these two aspects of the vagus. We have ventral, which we talked about, and now dorsal that we'll talk about. And dorsal is the place where, you know, we go, we collapse, we disconnect. The energy drains from our system. We kind of go through the motions, but we're not really present doing it, right? And I know every time I talk about it, I can feel it beginning to come up in my system. My voice changes. 
my breathing changes, right? And what you know, polyvagal theory shows us is that it's a it's a very um, common place for people to go, right? In fact, we visit all of these states in in small ways all the time, right? In big ways when we're really challenged, but in small ways all the time, you know. And and for dorsal to help people get a flavor of it, it you know, it simply often for me is a sense of oh, I, I don't feel as present as I was just a minute ago. Or, I, you know, really the going through the motions. I'm going through the motions, but I'm not really caring so much about what's happening, right? So I look like I'm here and doing things, but not really, right? So that's that's the dorsal survival energy that, again, protects us, right? And one of the things this does is it rescues us, so to speak, from the overwhelm of sympathetic, right? And so it takes us out of that chaotic, disorganized world, but it doesn't nourish us. It just gets us away from that into another survival state, the state of disconnect. I talk to people, I say, we disappear in some way. We become invisible in some way, unseen, lone, lost, abandoned in some way in this dorsal place. Yeah. Sometimes the terminology can get us all mixed up with these things. And so I I always use mnemonics to try and figure, remember which is which dorsal dorsal ventral. It doesn't matter as much, you know. You, you kind of you understand it, but but one of the um, the ways that I think about it is I think about ventral as being like vents that open up, like so. There's a way out. You don't feel trapped. The vents are open. You can breathe. You have room to explore. You feel safe. And then dorsal is like down shutting down, the doors are closed, you're shutting down. And for some people, they may experience that as um, even dissociation if they're in an extreme trauma of just the complete body shutdown. And it's important for us to also recognize, because you use survival, that none of these are good or, or bad. It's we want flexibility amongst them and be able to move from shut down to open up to, you know, run when you need to run. Um, I was interviewing a monk, um, Brother Fapu, who was, um, he was the attendant of Thich Nhat Hanh when he went through uh, his stroke. He was attendant of his for, for 10 years, but he talked about his experience of uh, being uh, Thich Nhat Hanh's attendant during the time of his stroke. And um, he talks about this moment when he looked across the way and um, he saw some, some of the nuns hugging and he thought that Thich Nhat Hanh had died. And he said, I started running, mindful, one-pointed running, <laughs> you know, because of that sympathetic nervous system. But it was sympathetic in a way that wasn't like he, he was staying centered and mindful while he was being active right. as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, if we want to talk about one other piece of our anatomy, that is the, the um, gift of what Steve named the vagal break, which is this one ventral circuit. So it's a circuit that, that um, goes to the sinoatrial node of your heart. And so it um, allows the heart rate to speed up and slow down. So as you know, I like your vents, so it can open the vents wider so that we have more energy flooding in from the sympathetic mobilizing energy, but it keeps us in the state of safety and, and presence rather than going to sympathetic survival. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for, you know, if we think about the vents, the vents can open wider and, and close more and open and close so that we have more or less access to that energy. And it sounds like, you know, the monk was in that place of, of vents had opened. So he had the energy to run, but he was very much present and, and in that place of ventral regulation as he was running. And that's really part of what we're doing all the time is we're trying to help this part of our anatomy work more and more efficiently so that we have more capacity to, to you know, become activated and calm and activated and calm all while staying in, in that place of, of feeling regulated enough, safe enough, right? That, and I liked what you said. The goal is never to, to be anchored in ventral all the time. That, that's not realistic or really not even, um, you know, it's not achievable, it's not safe, right? We have survival responses for a reason. 
right? And we need our survival responses. And the goal is to know when am I in ventral? When have I left ventral and am now visiting sympathetic? And when have I, you know, my clients would say they went down the dorsal drain. So when have I gone down the drain to dorsal? And how do I come back to ventral? That's a flexible, resilient nervous system, which is, you know, how we experience well-being, right? That's well-being, really.